Hey, Life Pro friends and family. It's Roseanne Zaff from Live Fit, and I'm super excited today to start a new series with Life Pro Vibration Platforms and Therapeutic Yoga. We're going to dive into the chakras, and we've decided to go into two parts. Today, Mondays, are going to always be an instructional part, talking about the chakras, and then on Wednesdays, same time, we're going to go into a little bit about practice. And each of these videos will be about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on what's going on. So I am so happy to be here. If you're viewing live, give me a high five. Let me know where you're from and what vibration plate from Life Pro that you're using. Today, I'm going to go with my trustworthy Rumblex Pro 4D. Um, but as I say every time, whatever vibration plate you have is perfect because it is all about moving energy. So a little bit about the chakras in case you're not sure. First of all, chakras are pronounced differently. Some people say chakra, some people say chakra, but whatever you want to call it, tomato, tomato. Um, the chakras are basically a subtle energy system in our body. And there's many, many chakras, but seven are the most commonly referred to. And in the yoga practice, we talk about them and we use them. The chakras are, as I said, energy bodies, and they're actually swirling vortexes, swirling circles of energy that start from the base all the way up to the crown. And they run up and down the spine and they kind of, the energy just kind of zigzags through. So again, what better way to balance chakras than on a vibration plate? Um, I'm going to go today and start right from the base, and I'm going to introduce you to the Muladhara chakra. Now, Mula means root, and Hara means support. So this is a chakra that's all about earth and groundingness. So while we start, or since we are starting, what I'd like you to do is have a seat. We don't need a lot of props today, even though we give you the list every week. I want you to have them handy. But today, all you need is your chair. We're going to start there, and we're going to really talk about it. Now, I've also decided to, um, I'm going to show you in this in instructional, I'm going to show you how to do this if you can't stand on your vibration plate yet, because you know, some of us just don't yet. And then I'm also going to show you standing postures. So go ahead on your vibration plate. I'm going to actually put it on um, my, my Rumblex. I'm going to power this baby up to um, the, lat uh, the oscillating and the pulsation. So um, let's go on with about a speed of, let's take it to one to start, actually. Let's just start here because I want to talk about grounding. Okay, so while I'm talking about this, take your heels and push down, spread your toes wide, and press your feet there. Now, in the chakra, it is a four, there's, a, there's a symbol always. It's a four-petal lotus. And as I said, it's sent, the chakra itself is centered at the base of your spine. The element is earth. Now, we're going to be on our platform today, moving energy, but when you get done with this, go outside, put your feet in the ground, Put your hands in the ground, get it all dirty, and get grounded with the earth. The color is red. That is why I'm wearing red today. <laughs> Not always the color I wear, but red is the color of this chakra. And the, um, the focus of the chakra, Mula Dahara, is about support, self-preserving, survival, security, presence, and again, being connected with the earth. Each chakra has several different elements that we use in it. We talk about the element itself, which is earth in this case. We talk about the color, which I said was red. There's also um, essential oils that are used. And I actually have, I'm going to grab these. Um, there's about five different essential oils. Cedarwood is one, myrrh marjum, sandalwood, and clove. Now, clove is very spicy, but any of these oils are really earthy in scent. So if you're working with an essential oil when you're working your root chakra, 
you're going to simply take it, and I know you can't smell, unfortunately. I hope you'll maybe consider grabbing an oil. And you're going to take a, a drop of this oil, and I'm just going to put a little bit on the base of the foot. Now, while I'm saying this, go ahead and take one foot and literally rub your foot. Yeah, go ahead and grab it and rub your feet because you want to feel that, you know, and I think, and Amber said this, there's like so many nerves on the bottom of our feet. And people ask all the time, should I be barefoot? Should I be on the mat? If, you know, if it bothers your feet. But again, you're seated here. So let your, rub your feet a little bit and kind of move your toes around. And let that energy move and then step on your platform with your, with your feet there. Now, as I said, you've got about four or five different essential oils to use. And that helps with the olfactory system of getting our brain involved. Now, as always in any of our therapeutic practices, we want to focus on the breath. So again, while you're sitting here, take a deep breath in from the base, the belly, the ribs, the heart, all the way to the crown of the head, and then exhale and ground down through your spine to your feet. Now, in each chakra, there is a hand position. These are called mudras. Kind of think of it like yoga for your hands. And what you'll do is take your thumb and your index finger, these two tips of the thumb and index finger, and place them together. Just press them together. This, this mudra is called dhyan. And you can place your palms up on your thighs and allow that vibration from your legs, from your thighs, to come into your palms, up your shoulders to the crown of your head. Now, we also in every chakra, there's a mantra. And the base of this mantra is the words, I have. I'm going to suggest to you right now to consider this mantra. I have all that I need. I am safe. I am well. I have all that I need. I am safe and I am well. So while you're sitting on your seat, Feet on the platform, your, your mudra, closing your eyes, breathing in your essential oil, sighing out of your mouth. Just repeat that mantra. I am everything I need. I am safe. I am well. <sighs> Feels good, doesn't it? You can keep your mudra. You can place your hands, palms down, thumb and index finger connected. Now, the next thing about this move of the chakra is each chakra has a gland it's associated with. In this case, it's the adrenal glands. And the adrenal glands sit right at the base of the kidneys. Now, when you are in fight and flight and fear and running, the adrenal glands release a lot of cortisol in the system. And we get all tensed up. That's where in our fear mode. When the adrenal glands are a little bit healthier and balanced out, we, we feel safe, we feel grounded. And that's the whole point, again, of this chakra. Is it in balance or is it in balance? How do you know? It comes back to feelings. We feel. Is this a safe world we live in? Right now it's a lot of craziness, and so a lot of us are not very grounded. We have a lot of fears going on. So chances are your root chakra might be a little out of balance. So you might be, it might be very open and you're depressed. It might be very closed and you're feeling very fearful. So all you do, all you need to do is come on your platform, come into a, any kind of vibration that feels for you, feels good for you, and go into some of the practice of the asanas. So now I'm going to go talk to you about, uh, let's see, one, two, about four or five different asanas we're going to use. And they're going to be seated to start. And I'm going to give you options standing. So work with me on this. So we're here seated. Now we're doing the child's pose. Your feet go wider, and you're going to slide your hands down. And if it's comfortable for you, drop your head and let your head hang here. Now I'm going to place my hands right, rest them on my platform, shaking up a little bit. And feel how your seat, your tailbone, is my pushing out a little bit. Pull your belly in and tuck your tailbone. And hang out here with me for a little bit. If it's too much for your shoulders, Bring your forearms, and you can continue with that mudra, the Dhyan mudra, working on, on this sort of child's pose. Okay? Now, I'm not going to hold these long because, again, we're doing the practice on Wednesday. Now, the next pose is Utkatasana. 
known as chair pose. And heck, we're sitting in a chair now. So bring your feet together, and you're going to reach your hands up and lean forward. Now, I'm going to show you what this looks like from the side. Again, if you're on your chair, you're sitting here. You're hinged forward. Your spine is long. I'm not cast shooting the back. Spine long. We're really base, anchoring into the base, and we're going to reach up. You may want to put your hands behind your head, and you're really feeling energy from the platform up to your pelvis and from your pelvis up to your head. Now, a lot of organs of elimination, digestion, are part of the root chakra. Our feet, obviously, our hips, our bones. All these are affected by the root chakra. Now, that's your chair pose, okay? The next posture is tree pose. And, you know, this one is pretty challenging when you're standing, so I'm going to show you your seated chair pose. Just take your right foot and press it up against your thigh or your calf. I would suggest grabbing onto the ankle, okay? Just push it in there and press your hand down. And you're sitting nice and tall. You're making this connection of your foot to the inner thigh and pushing down on the platform foot. This is your seated tree pose. You're really rooting that left foot into the platform. And I can take the mudra and place my left hand on my left thigh and sit up nice and tall and feel that energy of the platform. And then switch sides. Let's just balance that out because we're talking about balancing chakras. Put your foot in, palm open, thumb and index finger and sit tall. And take a breath, belly, Rib cage, hearts, and anchor into your seat. That's your seated tree pose, also known as a prakasana. Now, the next pose is goddess pose. So once again, your feet are wide. You can bring your chair close, and you're going to take your arms and reach out and hinge forward. You're pushing the knees out. You might even want to bring your hands to prayer and hinge forward. This is a great release in your lower back. The, again, the physical focus of this chakra is the spine, lower base, the back, the legs. So if you're dealing with a lot of sciatica, and many of us are, that's part of your, the root chakra. That might be a lot of balance, energetically, that is. And then come back up. That is our goddess pose. Now, warrior pose seated is pretty cool to do because all you have to do is take I'm taking my left foot out. I, you see, I scoop myself to the center. My platform's just about to go off, so give me a second here. Slide your left foot back, right hand on the thigh, and you can see my pelvis is even. I've lifted my back heel. I'll show you this from the side. And reach your hands up. Warrior poses are a pose of courage. So you're opening up to receive. Your heart is lifted, you're grounded in your feet, you're, you have a right to be here. You're standing in your power and your breath. There's my platform, it's shut off. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to just go into the pulsation. And again, I'm on my, um, I'm on the rumblex, so I'm just going to pulse anyway. I'm going to kick it up to about 30, all right? So this is a lot of pulsation, which is really awesome. I can feel that buzz of energy going up my legs. And here's the side version of Crescent Warrior. I want to make sure you can see my feet. So my back foot, let me bring my screen down because this foot placement is pretty important here. I got my oils all over the place. Okay, so you're going to take that hip and you're going to roll back. You're, I'm on my toes, pushing down. You're opening up your hip. You're opening up the flow of energy in the pelvis. Reach up, stretch up. Both hands here. Hands get hold behind, elbows forward. So this is your crescent warrior pose. And make sure you do this on the other side with me. Because again, you want to keep these balanced energetically. Sliding the foot back, hips are square. I love doing chair yoga. It's great. And then you have the energy of the platform underneath you to top it off. It's awesome. Reach up, take your hands behind your head. That keeps your chin in. And once you know your head and shoulders are in alignment and you're pushing through that back thigh, you can reach up to the full crescent warrior. Take a big breath in and a long breath out. Excellent. Now, we're going to show you downward dog in a different and unconventional way because 
Downward dog can be one that's very challenging for uh, a lot of people who can't do, do a regular downward dog. So I'm going to ask you now to stand on your platform. And I'm moving my chair quite for, far forward, and my hands are going to be on my chair. Not too close together. Keep the hands open and shift back. So you can see my ears are aligned with my biceps, and my butt is lifted up. I'll show you this from the side view. This is a super way to get your downward dog going on. I'm going to move these oils out of the way. So once again, I'm on my platform. And I'm going to push my butt back. If your hamstrings are tight, this will be a great way to stretch your hamstrings. Hands forward. And pull your belly in. You don't want to let it sag. Pull the belly in and drag your arm bones back into the socket. So this is a beautiful way. I got to tell you, this is one of my favorite ways to do downward facing dog on the platform. Lift all 10 toes, spread them wide. You can bend the knees and stretch, but feel the energy coming all the way up the back of the legs. Take a nice big breath in through your nose, side out, pull the belly in. And Enjoy that downward dog. Stretch your spine. And come on. Okay, that's for all you chair people. Let's go into the practice of standing now. So we had a seated pose when we first started. I'm going to call that seated pose with our hands there, just our Tadasana. Now, if you're standing on the platform, if you feel comfortable with that, we're going to kick it up a notch into a standing Tadasana. So I'm on my platform. I love this pulsation. So, oh my goodness. Look at your feet. I kind of like to have a, well, I don't kind of like, it's really good to feel like your big toes are more together and you're, you're pulling the heels apart and you're feeling energy come up the thighs. You may want to take a yoga block or a, a toilet paper roll under between your legs, but right now you don't need to do that. And we're going to reach the hands down, take the mudra, of index finger and thumb. Reach the pinky fingers down, pull the chin in, and allow your spine, your tailbone, to drop down. I'm gonna again show you from the side here. I'm going to feel the tailbone dropping down, the heart lifting up, hands at your side, palms facing out. This is Tadasana. So, we root our four corners of our feet into the platform. Oh my goodness, I really do like this, I gotta tell you. Is anyone else on a Romlex Pro and Pulsation? Let me know how this feels for you, just to stand here and breathe. From Tadasana, you're gonna hinge your hips back and reach forward into our chair pose. In many practices, people suggest Yogis will suggest to bring your knees together. I like to have them in line with the hips and belly back. Belly in, arms reaching forward. You can always take your hands. That's a cue you'll always hear me say to pull the head back. It'll help you to pull your belly in. So you're not jutting your chin up. There's a direct correlation of your chin and your neck to what's going on in your back. So if you deal with back stuff, I'm going to pull my chin in. Again, I'm going to pull my tailbone under, and I've got my chair pose. And you don't have to go too deep in this, but feel that energy from your feet, your thighs, into your hips, into your pelvis. Come out of that. Utkatasana, chair pose. So our next one, tree pose. Now, if you're on oscillation, this is going to be a little challenging, so let's grow our tree. You're going to take your right leg and turn your heel out. It looks almost like a T stance. Square your hips. Slide your foot up so you can feel your heel against your ankle. And then maybe slide your foot up so you feel your arch against your calf. You can place your hands at your heart, your hips, arms out. You may even want to take that foot all the way up. Let's see if I can do that today. There it is. Heel into the thigh, not the knee joints. And I'm going to take my mudra. I'm going to open up my branches of my tree and breathe. As always, an advanced posture to smile during this. 
Feel your tailbone rooting down to your heel and release. Let's try the other side. Maybe move up the hips a little bit. Okay, you're turning your thigh bone out. You're in extra rotation. Hips are square. Okay, the vibration from the plate coming from the earth, bringing the heel to meet the ankle. Keep your tailbone down. I want you to really feel that the belly button in, tailbone down. Remember, this chakra is root, root, at our base of our spine. Slide your foot up to your calf. See how that feels for you. Press bones into bones. Remember, our physical focus is bones. This side isn't so balanced for me today. Breathe into it. Remembering the mudra. I have everything I need. I am safe. I all is well. Now, if it works for you, go ahead and grab it a little. Your heel up. Bring the inner thigh. Connect index finger. This mudra gyan is also a mudra of focus and gratitude. I've been on a real gratitude kick lately. It's a great way to start the day. Feeling grateful for everything that we have. Okay, open things up now from our tree. We're going into goddess pose. So you see my feet going wider, wider. Now drop your hips. Everyone's going to be a little different here. So I'm bringing my hands down. I'm going to take my hands outside my knees. Be where you're at with this. I'm going to come down a little bit more. My heels are still glued down. I'm going to find my platform and I'm going to come all the way down, dropping the base of my spine and tailbone. Hands at the heart space. So this is the full goddess pose. If you feel a little unstable, grab a chair. Hold on to that chair and that's going to help you to stay up. So you're not hanging. You want to feel the pelvic floor lifted up. Okay. I'm just going to hang out here for a second. Pulling up the Mula Bandha. The Mula Bandha is a lock. There's three locks in our system. Mula, Udi, and Jalahara. So Mula Bandha is at the pelvic floor. Pull up through the pelvic floor. It's kind of, I'm going to explain it like kind of holding the flow of urine. So you're going to feel the lifting. Hold, hold it, squeezing in the bladder. And slowly come up. Next, we go into Crescent Warrior. Right foot on. Step back as far as you can. Make sure your, your platform leg is foot is grounded, hips are square. You're going to bend into the front knee, wiggle the back foot off until you're pushing through the ball of the foot. The heels lifted, arms reach forward, take an inhale, stretch up, exhale, drop the shoulders. Perhaps you're going to go into your mudra at the same time. Remembering that I have everything I need. All is well, I'm safe. Release that and let's go into the other side. So once again, I like to start with both legs straight, really well rooted in your platform. You'll bend into the knee, track the knee, slide your back foot back, wiggle, wiggle. You can always bend that back knee to make sure your pelvis is tucked. And then let's reach up and stretch up. Lean into it. Excellent. One more breath in. One more breath out. And come out. So finally, downward facing dog. So uh, my platform has shut off. I'm going to take it into a little bit of lateral. I'm going to kick it up a little bit. Change it up, I should say. Not really kick it up. So I'm going lateral on this. Speed is only going to be two. I'm not working on a lot of big energy movements here. I did for pulsation, but not for lateral or oscillation. Spread your fingers wide, place them on the platform, walk back until your ears are in line with your biceps and press into the platform. Lift all 10 toes up so you can really anchor into your feet. Then relax your toes. There's your downward dog. Slowly come out of that. If that one's not working for you today, you always have your chair. So I'm going to add this little instructional part so you can have a couple options here. Either sit on your platform, sit on your chair with your feet on your platform. Let's just come into a posture that feels comfortable for you. Right now I'm just going to sit here in my lateral. I don't have a yoga blanket handy, but that's okay. I'm just going to let my pelvis rock. 
Adjust your pelvis. You can move the treasures from the trunk. <laughs> Place your hands down and find, once again, your mudra. Mudras can be held for quite a long time. Again, this is like yoga for the hands. The fingers are stretched out, and you're just touching the tips of the thumb and index finger. Taking a deep breath in. Close your eyes if it's comfortable for you. And feel the vibration from your Life Pro Vibration platform at the base of your spine. And feel the energy floating up your spine, the belly, into the heart, the throat, between the eyes, the crown of the head. That's the whole line of our chakra system. Feel supported by your platform, supported by Mother Earth, supported by your family, your friends, your loved one, supported by divine energy, by universal light, universal love, whatever your higher power may be. And it might be just Mother Earth, and that's a wonderful higher power. Bring your hands together, the heart space. You can open your eyes if you'd like. I want to thank you today for hanging out with me as we explore a whole new series, the chakra system. There's more information about this whole series on the Life Pro website. We'll be including the link in this live stream. If you have any questions, any concerns, if anything's feeling a little off, like you felt a little bit uh, saddened, like something just was awakened, or maybe you felt a little more energy, you felt a little more stability. You know, just know that all this is a process. We never can balance them all out at once. There's always one chakra that seems to get our attention. Maybe it's a gut feeling, it's a heart feeling, maybe it's something that you intuitively feel. So that's our, our energy, our subtle energy body. But as I mentioned when we first started this, this practice or this instructional part, the vibration platforms are a beautiful way to move all the subtle energy in our body through our chakra system. I want to thank you so much again for spending this time with me. I, I hope you have a beautiful and blessed day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay strong.